Okay, so when you're designing something that you know you're going to be cutting on a CNC router, for example, uh, in this kind of kind of press fit joint, um, flat pack furniture design, we're going to want to create a lot of dog bone fillets. So if we look at this in the flat, now we can see, you know, in all of these inside corners, I wanted to create a dog bone fillet, right? So I could create these sketches manually with Fusion 360 and extrude them, but obviously that would take a long time. For something like this, we've got like 150 plus um, dog bone fillets that need to be applied. So what we have here is a add-in that uh, Casey Roger created that allows me to add these in in a really automated way. So let's take a look at how to get that set up and how to use it. Okay, to get started, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download the add-in. So this add-in is originally created by Casey Rogers, so you can check out his original uh, on his page, or you can download my fork here. Um, I assume that at some point, Casey's gonna incorporate some of these changes back, but for now, if you want the uh, body selection, which you'll see in a second, then uh, you need to download it from here. So basically, you can just download the zip file um, unless you want to, of course, fork it, modify it, which we totally encourage, have at it. Uh, but if you just want to get it to use it, download the zip file, uh, and then you can check out the um, instructions here. Just This will show you the location that you need to unzip it to. So you basically just drop the dire unzip the directory into either this location on Windows or on Mac. And this is an add-in, so put it in the add-ins folder. And then when you start up Fusion, it should be in there. Or you can manually add it by clicking the plus sign. Okay, once you've installed the add-in, you can go into the add-ins menu, which is new here in the latest release. Under add-ins, under my add-ins, you should now see dog bone as an option. And you can hit it to be, you can run, press run, or you can select it to be run on startup. So I have it set to run on startup, so it'll just always be running. Um, and once the dog bone's running, you'll see this extra icon show up right here. Uh, you can always demote it, um, but you'll also see it down here in the create menu. You'll see this uh, dog bone as a new item. So you did a really good job with this. Uh, when you run it, you can do this two ways. So you can either select the edges. So if I just select um, a couple of edges here, and I'll give it a diameter of 0.25. You can give it an offset if you want to go bigger than your cutter diameter, but let's say I'm just using a quarter inch cutter, we'll just go with that. So I can select the three edges and it'll create a dog bone fillet, very nice. The alternative method to using that is again if I go and I run this, um, this is the modification that uh, just recently was made. So instead of selecting an interior edge, you can select an, an entire solid body. Now for this to work, notice the orientation of my part. This direction is top. If you look under here, you can see which direction your Z axis is. So if you show this, you can see Z is um, here in the vertical direction. So you could like hide these other ones. You can see that this is Z. So the logic here is, is that it looks at a body, looks at all the vertical edges, so all the directions, all the edges in Z, and then it will select all the edges and apply the dog bone to all internal edges. So again, so you just have to have laid your part out flat already. So if you're doing multiple parts, you would have wanted to lay them all out flat so that all of the um, cut edges are already in the Z direction and then it will apply the dog bone to all of it. So if you've got a big part with lots of internal corners, um, it'll just do it all in one shot. So you just select the solid bodies. The last technique I wanna show in here real quick uh, which is pretty useful um, if you're going to be uh, doing this a lot and you're going to be making changes and such things, is the first thing you want to do is come into Modify, go to Change Parameters, and then in User Parameters, you can define something, say, Cutter. Then in the value, put in, let's say if I, right now I'm going to use a quarter inch cutter, so I'm going to, again, create a parameter called Cutter, put in an expression of 0.25, say OK, now when I go to create the dog bones, again, I'll just select the body. Instead of typing in a value here, I'm gonna type in cutter. Because what this is actually doing is creating a whole bunch of features. You can expand this, you can see it's actually creating a feature um, for each one of these cuts. So if you wanted to later go back and change the diameter of your cutter, uh, it would be kind of challenging with the current implementation. But now, if you use that parameter, I can just come back in here to my parameters 
And in that user parameter cutter, if I change this to say 0.375, hit OK, all of the dog bones will update. So this is really the way that I would recommend using this, is create that parameter called cutter, and then when you apply the dog bones, just reference cutter, and it will make your life really easy. Another thing I'd like to point out is that uh, when you're using these dog bones, if you need to make changes to the geometry, you're going to make some dramatic changes, it's probably best to just uh, delete the dog bone and then recreate it after you make the geometry changes. Let me show you why. So if I have this uh, this sketch here and I make some kind of dramatic change, like I come in and I move this pocket way over here, sometimes you'll see this behavior where the sketch kind of flips on itself. And that's really just kind of a um, the nature of the way that this uh, dog bone was implemented. Again, it's not really like a real fusion parametric feature here. He's kind of really just creating it uh, on the fly. So really, if you're gonna do that, uh, what I would recommend doing is first, just, it doesn't take that long, right? So I say delete both the group and its contents, just delete the dog bone, make the change that you wanna make to the geometry, and then just go ahead and reapply the dog bone. So then we'll just come in here, reapply. Remember I've got cutter, hit okay, and everything is great. It's really an extra step, kind of not the most parametric way of doing things, but in the long run, if you just kind of stick to that mentality with this add-in, uh, your life will be a lot easier. And with that, uh, thank you guys very much and enjoy. See the links to download in the description.